only mode. Good day, everybody. Glad you're here today. So let's get started on this. Okay, today we are going to cover um, the basics of Microsoft Word and Excel integration with Dynamics here in 2016. So my name is Mitch Milam. I'm a Dynamics CRM architect and independent consultant and trainer. I'm also a 10-time Dynamics CRM MVP. You can reach me at my email address, which everybody should have by now, at xroomcoaches.com. My main blog right now is at um, uh, infinite-x.net. You can find me on Twitter, and if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, there's a quick uh, uh, URL there to do so as well. So future events today, uh, we already had the first webinar. That's already on YouTube, by the way. So if you missed the ribbon customization, it's already up there. If you attended, and I appreciate that, um, you should have just gotten an email with the link. So that's all great. Uh, I've got a, uh, a great strategy uh, workshop starting on Tuesday for the afternoon. And then uh, next Friday, we'll be doing a free webinar for um, an introduction to the Microsoft Project Service Automation Preview that's available for 2016 spring release. So that's what's coming up. A little bit of um, housekeeping here. So uh, everybody's muted, of course, so we can uh, maintain a little bit of silence on the, on the broadcast. And if you got a question, just put it into the question box or just raise your hand. I'll unmute you and you can ask it in person. So whichever one is better for you. So here's my training roadmap for the year. So continue the webinars. I've got my website is uh, about to be redone. Uh, the final stages on testing uh, this week. So hopefully the next couple of weeks it'll be up and live. Knowledge bits, if you haven't signed up, that's a free um, uh, email delivery system, just some tips and tricks that I have on a, a variety of topics. And then I've got some learning plans uh, under the free stuff uh, link there. And then um, I've got some books and other training materials and stuff like that coming out as well. My deep dive administration book is just about ready for uh, publication. In fact, I'm going through the process of getting that uh, publicized to Amazon as we speak. So that should be coming out very shortly. Okay, so today we're going to cover the Word and Excel integration. Um, I'm going to list uh, some third-party solutions that kind of extend it uh, past what the out-of-the-box solution is. And we'll just give a couple demos so you can see how things actually work. So, with 2016, they added a series of document templates. So if you go to Systems, Sorry, settings, um, templates, you'll now see a document templates um, uh, area in there. So he, these are the ones that come with the system. As you can see, it's a mix between Excel and Word. Uh, Word is generally a single record, whereas Excel is mostly a, a view or a list of records. Okay, so just some out of the box. Functionality, you may create them from scratch. You can upload an existing file as a template. You can delete an existing template. Templates must be activated just like you would a process before they can be used. To create a template, you just um, create uh, or click the Create Template link, no matter where that is, and you get prompted for either creating an Excel template or a Word template. The data at the bottom will change based on your selection at the top. So in this case, we're going to create a Word template on the account. After you finished, you need to uh, upload the template back into CRM so other people have access to it. And you do that simply through the upload template and then just click the browse button and browse to the file and we'll upload it. This is what happens uh, after you upload it. Um, most of the information is locked down, but you can change the name and the description. And then you can also deactivate the, the, uh, the template as well. When you deactivate it, of course, it's uh, not available for, uh, for publication with everything else. So. Um, that's an option if you have to take something out of service, you just deactivate it while you're working on it. To use it, just uh, select it from the template. So it's either going to be Excel templates or Word templates. And you can open it either in Excel online or you can download it uh, locally and uh, open it within Excel on your desktop, either one. So we do have a couple security things there. So like the forms that we have with the dynamic CRM, we can also specify the security roles that can actually see this template. So for instance, if you have one type of template that is only available to sales managers, then you could select the sales manager role and no one else would have access to it. Likewise, the default is that everyone has access to all templates. So this is the, the default setting as well. Finally, you can actually set who can actually create uh, different types of templates. So on the salesperson role, they can, they can only read document templates. So document templates are the system level templates. Personal document templates they can actually create um, and uh, use and share amongst themselves as well. 
So uh, if these two things are concerned, like you only want um, administrators or maybe a certain group of power users to be able to control the document templates or create them, this is how you control that. So you just uh, uh, remove their ability to create is what you would probably do. So let's go through Word real quick. So you can create a template using either Word 2013 or 2016, but you can use it in 2010, 2013, and 2016. That's really just a, a technical challenge there. That's all it is. Again, whenever you uh, select Word as a template, you select the, uh, the entity to filter by. When you click the Select Entity button, um, it will actually uh, go to the next feature. Remember that Word typically, their templates work on a single record. That's how that works. So uh, works on a single record. Uh, when you click download file, it will actually download the file to your local machine. Uh, before it does that, one of the things that it asks is, would you like any other um, information included in this? So you pick the relationships, and what happens is this information is actually put into the uh, schema that you can actually work with to add fields. And if you don't select it here, it's not going to show up in the template. So um, I don't really see a way to update an existing template. I guess you just have to copy it, start over maybe. So there are some things that you have to do to Word to make it either one function or two, uh, not cause you a lot of heartache and things. The first thing you have to do is you have to turn on the developer toolbar. So you do this by going to the Word, you go to File Options, and then to customizing the, uh, the ribbon, and then enabling the developer toolbar. It's normally turned off, so that box is unchecked. Next thing is check your autocorrect options. There's a couple of autocorrect options that will end up causing pain and heartache if you're not careful. One of those, which is on the left-hand side, is capitalize the first letter of sentences. So all of the fields that we're going to be working with are in lower case, and it does not recognize or it will cause a problem if you have a mixed case. So having Word automatically correct your field names every time you put one in is a problem. So turn that off. At the bottom, you can also turn off suggestions of the spell checker. And finally, the right-hand side there, the hyphens, um, that checkbox will turn a hyphen from um, uh, from a hyphen into a, a dash, what they call an M dash or an N dash is the technical terms, uh, which are different or special characters. They're not dashes or not hyphens, sorry. When you're working with the field list, there is uh, a button on the developer uh, uh, tab called the XRM, sorry, the uh, XML uh, mapping pane, which pops up on the right hand side. And what you do is you need to go and select the schema that matches the, uh, the entity that you had selected when you first started this process. In most cases, it will begin with Microsoft CRM, as you can see, and then end with the word uh, after the entity, like account is what we selected. So this is the entity I select. And when I select that, I will get a list of fields. So um, you'll have the account, all the fields you selected, then underneath that will be any of the related entities, and then the fields available to those entities as well. Okay, so that's basically the general thing of how you actually put all this stuff together. When you insert a field, you right-click on it and say Insert Content Control, and then pick either plain text or picture. Um, I'm not really sure where the picture thing comes in, but if you don't choose one of these two options, it will uh, has a bad tendency, evidently, to uh, lock Word up. Um, you have to restart it. So only choose plain text or picture. Like I said, I haven't seen the scenario where picture is called for, but plain text definitely works. So any questions on working with Word before we get into Excel? Nope. Okay. Excel again starts out the same way. We pick the Excel template. Then what it allows you to do is it filters it not only by the entity, but also by the save view. So this just records the query used to produce the data. So you can also edit the columns that you want. So if the columns that are in the view are not what you want in your Excel sheet, you can actually click on edit columns and put that data into um, the list to be exported. You click the download file button and we'll open them up. Um, a couple of caveats here. It only works with system views. Uh, again, you can select the columns to export. You only get access to the entity fields for the entity you selected. You do not have access to anything that's a related entity field. Uh, again, clicking the download button, download file button will create and download the document and uh, open it up for you. And this is what it looks like. 
So if you've done any work with exporting data from Excel for later re-import, you will recognize this format. Notice that columns A through C are hidden or missing. That's because they contain data about updating the, um, the existing data. So you can use this to re-import. Um, you have to leave it at rows and columns. Uh, again, do not modify columns A through C. Do not create a pivot table out of it. And the standard import rules apply. So what happens is if you change data, the row gets updated. If you add data and, and add rows, the rows get inserted. And the way that the process works is it will actually uh, parse it out and then verify the data and then perform whatever operation it needs to on it. We'll do that here in a minute just to see what it's like. If you end up going the pivot table route, which is what a lot of people do, um, make sure that you change the pivot table options to refresh data when opening a file. Um, that way, uh, the, the data is updated inside of the worksheet and therefore re reflected in the pivot table. If you don't do that, the user is looking at stale data and they may or may not understand that. So that could lead to bad decisions, etc. So turn this one on. Oops. Okay, a couple things we noticed. Um, you cannot have the template opened uh, when you're trying to upload it back into uh, to CRM. Uh, basically, it'll, it'll either not work or produces very odd errors. So uh, whatever you're, you're doing, just close it out. Um, new templates may not be displayed in the available templates list, so you may have to reload the page you know, with the Control F5. Also, um, uh, the net, it's kind of a good practice, I noticed just through my work, of either naming the template a different name or moving the template somewhere else because uh, what happens is it goes into the downloads folder probably and if you uh, don't move it somewhere else to modify it the next time you try to download that you actually could get a different uh, the same file name and it might try to override it or something or it just get confusing so move it out of the way first um, some interesting usages that I found from uh, talking to some other people uh, document templates can actually take the place of SSRS reports um, they also can be used with the CRM mobile. So evidently, when you click on the download template, it will actually open it up in, uh, say, for instance, Word or Excel for the iPad, which I think is a really cool feature. So again, you can have system templates and you can have personal templates. Um, I don't really see any way to convert from personal to, to system, but you can just export a personal template and then go to the settings templates, document templates area, and, and import it in as a system template. Um, that would work. Okay, some additional functionality is kind of interesting. Um, if you would like to automatically create or populate a template, there's a thing called a, an action. There's a, a step added to CRM of 2015-ish called perform action. Action is a, uh, is a type of process, and they created a couple of, of uh, of these and one of those is called set word template so the action is set word template the entity is the uh, none with global and friends when you click the set properties button you get the middle dialog box where you set the template name and then the target entity which in this case is going to be the account so this is a dynamic parameter pointing to the account that you ran the workflow against and what will happen is it will actually populate the template so it will create a new document based on that template and then attach it to the record. And so if I look at my notes, I see the attachment there, account summary dot, dot, doc X. And if I double click that, it'll actually open it up into Word. Okay, so that's the neat little thing there. So there are some third party solutions. I don't have any affiliation with any of these. Um, I've only actually looked or worked with the document score pack from MS CRM add-ons. All the rest of them, I just kind of did a Google search, quite honestly, and just came up with others. This is just a few. There are a bunch of others out there. This is just the ones that I really spent 15 minutes looking for. So, uh, like I said, the document score pack is what I've seen a lot of people use. The others I uh, am truly not familiar with. So, if anybody has any experience with any of these, I would love to hear what you have to say when we get the Q&A part. Okay, who wants to go see some stuff? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, so you can go to sales and accounts. Let's go away. Okay, so let's go take a look at a, at a word tip first.
まいましたね。Okay, so in Word it is right here. Now I've already loaded one up, but I'll just kind of show you. So,、uh, oops. I am going to create a、uh, Word template, and I'm going to choose the account, select the entity. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I did account last time. Let's try doing quote this time. How about that? Let's do quote, and then my one-to-many relationship. I'm going to do quote product. I'm going to download that template. And I guarantee you, what happened was that it was downloaded and didn't tell me. Did it download? No, it didn't. I think my graphic got in the way. Try one more time. Okay, so enable editing. I've already got、uh, Word set up, so I have my developer toolbar here.、Uh, my uh, uh, spell checking and other、uh, things have been turned off. If I click on the XRM mapping pane, I need to go and change my schema to be quote. Expand that. So I'm going to put in about the account ID name. Right click, insert plain text. City. I'm going to come up with something. So here is my total amount. Table in here, two columns, and then I'm going to scroll down in my list here, and we're going to find quote details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the、um, so this is the amount. What do I need in a quote detail? I need an amount and I need a quantity and probably some kind of description. That pretty. That. Then what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and select the row. I'm going to right-click on the quote details, and I would like to say, I would like to create a repeating section of this. So what this did is it wrapped it in a repeating section for those three fields. Okay, now I'm going to save it.
close it because, like I said, it doesn't like it when you try to reopen it or upload it. So let's go over to quotes. Any quotes? Any quotes? Okay. Let's go create a quote real quick. This is a demo system, so I hope I have data. C is USD. If you all money skills before continuing, okay. Potential customer. Not a datum. Can you guys not hear me? How about now? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, my mic for some reason stopped picking up things while I go for a little bit, but it seems to be seems okay now. Okay, so got that saved. Uh, price list, I need a price list. Don't have a price list listed. Let's go create one real quick. Let's call it retail. Save it. Okay, use that. Now let's go add some some records here. Okay, existing products. Oh, no, I have products and that sucks. Let's go create a new product. How about that? This may have been a bad idea to shift from my uh, other thing. Tell you what, I'm going to go back and, this is going to take too long, let me go back and create a new one based off account, how about that? That would be better. So let me go check a datum, see what we have here. Okay, so we've got comp samples, so let's, okay, you've got that. Sorry, I thought that we had sales data in there. We do not, so let's go do this more time. Create a new word template. Entity. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my contacts. Contact customer account. That's the one I want. Since that will give me my associated contacts. Open that up. Turn in editing mode. Go to the developer tab and select our account. Expand that. And then I'm going to put the account number. Contact, expand that, and let's put in right here 
within the four lane field. And we're going to put the address, email address one. Now remember, these are the, what they call the logical names, so they may not always match your display names. So just keep that in mind. And then what do they call that? The business is business phone. Okay, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to select the entire row. And I'm going to scroll back up to the top uh, of the associated contact list here. Right there, I'm going to right click on that and I'll say insert content and insert a repeating control. Okay, I close that. Come back to CRM. Create a new word template, click on the upload button, browse to where my file should be, just could be in downloads, so that one right there, I change the file name to be quick account summary, going to save it, and again I'm going to have to do control F5 to get it to reload. Well, it's doing that. Carlos asks, is it possible to do uh, add conditions with, with if then else? Uh, no, sir. It does not appear that you can do that with, with this version. So um, not sure if they're building that in, but that is, that's a great question. Okay, go back to the account. I'm going to open up a, a datum. Select my template, my quick account summary. Open it up, and there I have my account information and then my contact information, and that is how you do a mail merge within Word. Okay, makes sense. Any questions on the Word part of it? Okay, now again, very, very simplistic, uh, to, to be quite honest, um, uh, like Carlos was mentioning, there is no if-then logic because like one of the things here, um, uh, we don't have access. Okay, I want uh, I don't want um, uh, blanks here. Okay, so if I have a blank, what do I do about that? Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything built in like that. Uh, Rick asked, what are the main limitations to the Word and Excel templates uh, other than modifying an existing template? Rick, I don't truly know that answer to that question. I mean, in all honesty, you've seen everything you can do. I, I mean, you can add fields. Um, there are a few other things you might can do, but uh, other than that, um, you know, this this is just a standard mail merge type of thing. So it's it's not it's not really that complicated in nature. Sorry, just just my mic. Okay. So yeah, that's that's one of the things. Can everybody hear me better now? Sorry, I just realized that uh, basically uh, I was using the wrong microphone this whole time. So that's why you were having trouble hear me, hearing me. Sorry about that. So anyway, yeah, so I, I really don't know much limitations. It's very, very straightforward. It really just puts data into um, – uh, it puts data into the system, and, and that's it. I mean, it's, it's not uh, it's not complicated. It's not it's not a true programmatic mail merge. It's not like Word. It really just is like replaceable parameters, even though it looks like mail merge. Okay. Okay. So let's go back over to Excel. So again, remember that with Excel, what we're really working with is is views of data. Okay. So. Here with the active accounts, if we go to um, uh, Excel templates and create an Excel template, it's going to say, okay, which view? So let's, let's change it to uh, account views. And then uh, we, we can get the columns. We don't need to. We download that file, open it up. 
enable editing, and then from here we could, you know, we could change things whatever we wanted to. If you wanted to try and change some of this data, so like for these uh, new account stuff, so let's say, um, let's go. Okay, so we've got those changed. So we changed one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to close that. And again, this is just your standard worksheet. So let's go close that and let's just go perform a data import. So we're back here. We go to import data. Browse for the file. This is the one I think we just did. Since it was exported out, it knows what to do with it, and therefore we can actually keep going. Okay, so there's nothing for you to really do besides select if it's duplicates and then set who the owner is for any new imported records. So we submit that and then go to imports. Remember that the, the if you've ever done uh, imports, it's a it's a several phase thing. So the first thing it does is it does a, a parse and then it does a transform of the data and then finally does the import process. Okay, so it's parsing. Total process is five, which is exactly what we modified. The rest of them it just ignores because we didn't change them. Okay, completed with no errors. That's great. We'll go back to our list and do a refresh, and you'll now see that I have cities listed up. So that's the first iteration of this. The second one is we could go and reopen it, and if you're if you're a pivot table kind of person, you could actually turn this data into a pivot table and do something else with that. So you kind of got two things here. You can use it for data reimport, um, or you can just use it for doing analysis and stuff. So the idea is you download the data. You create your pivot table and then you actually uh, put it back into the system so other people can use it. Okay. Any questions on this? None? Daniil, uh, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, I'll mute you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Mitch. Uh, I think I'm good for now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I got too many things. I got too many screens going on here. Okay, so like I said, very rudimentary. Um, if you um, if you need to go past this, then you know maybe you you need to be using uh, like SSRS for for the reporting. Um, like I said, I, I uh, the um, document core pack from um, MSCR Matt on seems to be fairly uh, fairly well put together, and um, uh, they have both server components and um, client components. So the server components uh, allow you to do things like create creating documents behind the scenes with workflows, creating SharePoint libraries, etc., stuff like that. Okay, Vladimir, you want to ask? Uh, let's see which. Vladimir, you have two sessions open. Can you raise your hand so I can tell you which one to unmute? There we go. Okay. Not quite ready yet. Oh, how about that one? Okay, Vladimir, unmute yourself and then try it. Okay. Yeah, Vladimir, you're muted on your end, so you have to unmute yourself. Hello. Yep, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to ask about the data re-import, uh, specifically about the um, date and time fields. Okay. Uh, 
does it have uh, effect uh, uh, changing the um, local regional settings uh, on the specific user PC or the user profile in the CRM? You know, uh, that's a great question. Format. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Most of the time, when you do data, when you do any kind of modification, it's going to unless you've changed. Now you can okay, let me back up for a second. Okay, in an unmodified version of CRM, so you can change the way that dates are handled at this point in time with the, per field. With the normal fields, you can't; they're already done. Most of the time, when you re-import or when you when you create data or modify data, it's going to use the local time zone for the person that is uh, importing the data. Now, the database always contains the UTC version of that time. So if you guys didn't know how that worked, is it, it takes the time, it converts it to UTC time and stores it in the database as that time. When a user or a program extracts the data or views the data, it will automatically convert it into the local time for that specific person. Uh, and uh, in the case where the uh, date and uh, month uh, is uh, where the date is first, and uh, in the other format where the month is first, uh, does the conversion the conversion happen automatically? You know, I do not know the answer to that question. Quite honestly, um, I've never tried it like that because here in the states, our our, uh, our dates are month opposite of everybody else. Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody else know that question? If if the if your date starts with a year, uh, or your month is reversed, what what ha what happens in a non U.S. date format? Does it give it to you in a non U.S. date format, and if you re-import it back in, does it still work? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Mm, I've tried uh, to re-import, but uh, uh, when the date uh, is uh, preceding the month, uh, the system changes it uh, and. Uh, it happens uh, there is an error. The system draws an error uh, where it says uh, if the date is uh, uh, larger than 12, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the system uh, thinks that uh, this is the month and not the date. Okay. Um, what, what language pack do you what have language installed? Pack do you have installed? Uh, is the default language pack. Okay, that's the problem. Okay, that's the problem. Okay, I'm going to mute you for a second. I'm going to mute you for a second. Okay, so uh, basically what happens is you're going to have to be, if you want a something that's not English, you're going to, so but put it this way, if you have the default language pack, which is going to be in, in American English probably, it's going to be, the format has to be in that format. If you want to use another date format, you have to have, the another language pack installed to, to my knowledge so that it knows to use the other type of of date format make sense makes sense okay yes i understood okay great. thank you yes yes yeah, so, so basically what happened they, they, Vladimir, that's a great question the Dates get us into trouble all the time because everybody does dates a little bit different, of course, uh, based on where you are in the world. So, yeah, so it's going to be specific to the way that the server is configured for the language packs. And so if you have different than American English, then you have to select that language pack so that it knows how to format it, as, as far as I know. I don't know of any other way to do it. Okay, that's a great question. Anybody else have any questions? No. OK. Well, I really appreciate you coming today. And if any other thing pop up, uh, drop me an email. And other than that, I will see you at future webinars. Thanks a lot.